What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Craft of Vork Tastes. I'm your host, Max. And today we're going to be doing kind of an extra special episode of the Craft of Vork Taste. We're going to kind of be doing a combo video um, that is going to feature some beer mail I just received by an awesome, awesome friend of mine um, out of Evanston, Illinois. Andrew, thank you so much, man. Um, slash beer review. So I figured I'd kind of double them up a little bit. Um, you know, never actually done a beer mail video before. So, um, my buddy Andrew, um, in Evanston was super cool enough to send me across another box of killer Chicago land beers, I'm sure. Um, so Andrew, thank you so much, man. Um, and I figured what the hell I'll open it up on camera. I don't know what's in there. I don't know what he sent. I'm sure it's amazing, but thought it would be fun, you know, a lot of the other channels that I've always subscribed to over the years, you know, often do kind of beer mail videos from time to time. So I figured, what the hell, I'll do it. But at the same time, <clears throat> for people that are, are not all that interested in watching me open up a FedEx box and pull beers out, I figured I'd also do a beer review. So before we get started into the box here, um, I did just kind of want to mention the beer that we are going to be reviewing. So um, continuing down that pathway of, you know, larger brewery, mass-produced New England style IPAs. Um, if you've been watching the episodes of the last couple of weeks, um, I started off with Sam Adams New England uh, IPA. Then I moved on to the uh, New Belgium's um, uh, Voodoo. Oops, always screw this one up. It's the Voodoo Ranger Juicy Haze IPA. Um, and so then now, um, one more for you. And so this is Head Charge, a double IPA from Otter Creek Brewing, um, out of Vermont. Um, I believe they are from Middlebury, Vermont to be exact. Um, so, you know, regardless of where you are kind of across the country or where you're watching this video from, I'm sure folks in the Northeast, um, are going to be super familiar with Otter Creek, but if you're not and you're watching from maybe say the uh, West Coast and you've never heard of them, Otter Creek is kind of an old school, I believe they opened in 1991 Vermont brewery kind of before, you know, a lot of the, you know, breweries opened up in Vermont that you may well know of like Hill Farmstead, The Alchemist, um, Foley Brothers, uh, pfft, list goes on and on and on now. Um, so they were kind of, you know, in the Vermont space before Vermont kind of came, you know, became this kind of, you know, beer mecca of the Northeast, so to speak. It was kind of like them and Long Trail and Magic Hat, if you know any of those names. So, um, you know, over the years, they've released kind of some interesting beers. Um, by and large, they're, um, you know, relatively large in size. They distribute out to 14 states. The vast majority of them are on the East Coast. Um, but, you know, every now and then they would kind of put together a collaboration with um, Sean Lawson of Lawson's Finest Liquids. Um, that beer was called Double Doze. Um, they've had a couple of other releases that got a little bit of hype, but not a tremendous amount, right? Um, and so I saw this one locally um, at my bottle shop, and I was like, hey, pretty cool. It's called Head Charge Double IPA. Doesn't necessarily say New England style IPA or hazy or juicy on the uh, packaging, but it does say an enlightened state of haze and hops. So I did a little bit of research and yes, it is indeed their take on the New England style IPA. So I figured I'd dive into it while I open up this box. So let's get this beer into a glass first, right? Let's get it kind of into a glass, get it poured and then we can dive into that box. Um, and we'll kind of go from there. So again, Andrew, thank you so much again, man, for this box. I really appreciate it. Uh, look forward to restacking it with some, uh, you know, East Coast locals and uh, sending it back your way, my friend. All right, so let's take a look at this beer super quick. Um, beer comes in, typical New England style, haze. Um, not a tremendous kind of uh, amount of haze. Like, it's not like super kind of turbid uh, or anything of that nature. Just your traditional kind of New England haze. Um What's interesting is actually, so, you know, um, seeing a tremendous amount of kind of floaties and kind of particles going on there. Um, there is a tremendous amount of kind of sediment, whether that's both yeast and hop. Um, yeah, there is just a lot of kind of proteins going on in that beer, which is kind of interesting. But it looks super good. It's got about a finger of, uh, you know, compact, uh, you know, pretty much white head. Looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and give it uh, an aroma. Put our nose into it. Hmm. So it smells sweet. It's coming in at 8% ABV. Um, I kind of, I believe it's brewed with Citra and Simcoe, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, getting a tremendous amount of kind of um, malt sweetness right off the nose. 
if you want a little bit of kind of alcohol kind of taste going on, like this is kind of one of those beers that like smells, smells, smells like like a solid like 8% ABV, right? So going in the opposite direction of most New England style IPAs where you need the aroma and then certainly in the taste, I mean, it's very little, no alcohol present, no bitter, bitterness. This smells a little bit different. Like it smells every bit of its 8%. Yeah, getting a little bit of kind of um, kind of sweet candy fruits going on. Um, nothing too crazy with the nose, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, sweet candied fruits, maybe a little bit of orange, maybe a little tangerine, candied orange. It smells okay. Let's go ahead and uh, give her a taste. Cheers. Okay. So, yeah. Um... What's interesting is, is that the name is called Head Charge, right? And so it reminds me a lot more of kind of what the Alchemist's beers taste like now. Um, taste is a little bit more aggressive um, than what has traditionally kind of transitioned over to be the New England style, right? Um, there is kind of some pronounced bitterness. I am getting a nice amount of orange flavored, um, more kind of candied citrus than anything else. Uh, going back in again. Yeah, candied kind of citrus. Um, uh, mouthfeel is, um, you know, kind of medium to medium. I would just say probably medium. Medium mouthfeel. Um, you know, uh, feels kind of like slightly chewy. Um, yeah, it, it, it's aggressive <laughs> a little bit. And it kind of it, it kind of shows pretty much all of its 8%. On the back end, a little bit more, though. you got to kind of get that pronounced bitterness, but it is washing away pretty quickly. Um, so that's really interesting. You know, I don't know, obviously, like, Head Charge, Heady Topper. I don't know exactly know if that's kind of what they're going for. Um, you know, obviously, being in that area of Vermont, it would kind of make sense. Uh, you know, they're nearby the Alchemist, I think. Um, so, yeah, beer's pretty decent, man. Not too bad. I'll wait to give it a rating, but let's go ahead and dive into this box and see what... Andrew kind of sent along. So, again, I said, uh, Andrew lives in uh, Evanston, Illinois, so the last box that he sent across was just a crazy amount of uh, Chicago locals, and uh, already, I see multiple cans in here, I would assume that he's going to do pretty much the exact same thing. So, let's go ahead and dive in. If you remember from some of the videos that I did previously, a lot of beers that he sent across were Hot Butcher for the World, Mars, um, Noon Whistle, which is a brewery that I, uh, beer that I just did, their Gummy Vortex, which I thought was awesome. Um, pretty much everything that he sent across was awesome, um, and it was really, really kind of super clear that like a lot of breweries, obviously, um, in the Chicagoland area, beyond the ones that you may generally know, like Pipeworks and Half Acre and, you know, uh, maybe Off Color and things of that nature, a lot of these breweries are freaking killing it, man. All right, so beer number one. Wow. Andrew does an amazing job at packing. Holy smokes. All right. So, beer number one. This is, <laughs> that's kind of cool, just says beer on it. <laughs> Pretty simplistic. Uh, this is from Mars Community Brewing, obviously out of Chicago, Illinois. This is Midway Chippa, which is a Midwest double IPA. Cool. Uh, trying to see if it has anything here that says anything. 8% ABV. The one thing I do like about the Mars beers is that they're 12 ounces. Um, obviously, most breweries have obviously moved on to the 16-ounce can, um, which I love to. But uh, at the end of the day, sometimes you kind of just want a 12-ounce can. So I like that they do that. Um, on the back, it says, now with real haze. Huh. So that's kind of funky. Um, don't really know what it's brewed with. They don't really kind of give you any information. This one was canned in late February. So basically, we're just about a little bit over a month old. So... Yeah. Awesome. Andrew, thank you, man. That's sweet. So Mars Brewing, that's can number one. Or maybe I should just actually put it over there. Let me, like, can you even see that on camera? Probably not. I gotta get a bigger bar. <laughs> All right, so can number two. Thinking by the look of the can, this looks like a Mars beer as well. Yeah. All right, so beer number two. Also... From Mars Brewing Company or Mars Community Brewing. This is Can Music, which looks kind of cool. Um, New England style double IPA. 
And it says, drum for inventive percussion artists. Interesting. Four performers. Graphic score for four. Yeah, they got kind of funky little labels, man. Like, I think they're pretty cool. Um, I obviously have to do a little bit more, you know, um, you know, research into exactly what the beer is just because oftentimes they don't really explain it very much on their cans. But, um, yeah, man, awesome. Looks super, super cool. So two beers from Mars, which is exciting. I thought their beers were awesome last time I had it. Man, like I said, Andrew's a freaking pro at packaging, man. Look at this. Holy smokes. Let's go in. Got a bunch more here. All right, here we go. I got some 16 ounce cans, like you see. All right, what do we got here? All right, so next up is. Wow, that's kind of crazy. It's got like this tree like can art, and like there is a name. Ol. Naughty, I think it is. It's like the name is actually written into like the like the tree branches. If you can see it, that's <laughs> it's kind of crazy. This is a Citra and XP 06297 hopped Hobson oak infused IPA with vanilla. Wow, holy smokes! And this is brewed by Hop Butcher for the World, Solemn Oath Brewery. Miskatonic Brewing Company, a furniture store, and a realtor. I'm not making this up, I swear to God. <laughs> Look at the back. There's literally a realtor and a furniture store. And I guess this beer was made in collaboration to benefit the Naper Parks Foundation. So looks like this was brewed, obviously, as a fundraiser or something of that nature. Um, looks pretty freaking cool. I got to say, I've never had a collab beer uh, between a couple of breweries and a furniture store and a realtor, so that'll be a freaking first. Super cool can art, though, man. That's pretty awesome. Man. Cool. All right. Let's dive into the next one. What else do we got from Chicago Land? All right, yeah. And another beer from Hot Butcher of the World. This is Galaxy Bowl. So this is a Galaxy Hopped Double IPA coming in at 8% ABV. Um, yeah, man. Awesome. So obviously Galaxy, I guess maybe single hop. So Galaxy, 100% Galaxy Double IPA from Hop Butcher. That's freaking sweet, man. Canned on 3.7. So yeah, but just a couple of weeks old now. Uh, same thing, 3.7 on those Hop Butcher, on this Hop Butcher as well. Cool. I'm stoked, man. It says on the back, peach, pineapple, passion fruit. Yeah, no doubt. Excited to dive into that one. Um, you guys should be seeing uh, reviews, hopefully, you know, all of these beers coming up on the channel in the next couple of weeks. Um, I've reviewed, you know, most of the beers that Andrew sent me. Um, there were a couple that I did have, uh, you know, off camera just because I can't review all of them in the world. You got, like, crazy amount of beers in the queue try to get to all of them but it's super tough all right next beer this looks cool all right another beer from mars sweet man it is crushed velvet a new england style double ipa 7.5 abv that's awesome i dig like i said um 12 ounce cans that's freaking pretty awesome i can just kind of knock these back you know pretty simply do a couple of reviews on them in the middle of the week don't have to worry about you know Getting up for work and being a little lethargic or whatnot. But, all right, man. Awesome. Another beer from Mars. That is freaking super, super cool. All right. Let's push all this stuff off to the side. Get into another 16-ounce can. Let me get this off. Cool looking color to this can. All right, so another beer from Hot Butcher for the world. This is Mellotron. That's pretty awesome. I was a big Transformers fan when I was kind of growing up, so maybe that's kind of a you know a little shout out to like Megatron. I don't know. So this is a double IPA coming in at 7.58% ABV. It's brewed with Azaka, Motuika, and Simcoe. Cool man. Tasting notes on the back: fruit punch. L Lively citrus, 
thought it said Lavello. I was like, never heard of that before. Tropical Fruits, man. Cool. This is pretty freaking awesome. This was Canon 321, and it says Groovy Juice on the bottom. I'm sure it does, man. That is awesome. That is awesome. I am super looking forward to these gears. Wow. Andrew, you went freaking insane, dude. What are you doing? Wow. Man. I cannot thank you enough. This is crazy, crazy stuff. All right. Let's get another one open here. All right. What we got? All right. Another Hot Butcher. Sweet. Good Rise Wear Black. Cool. So an Apollo Cascade and Citra Hopped Black Rye IPA coming in at 6% ABV. Uh, tasting notes. Resinous Pine Light Chocolate Juicy Grapefruit. That is freaking sweet, man. Andrew, thank you for that. Reason being is I haven't had, you know, Black IPAs in a while, like, you know, I don't know, four years ago, they were kind of all the rage, right? Black IPA, Cascadian, Cascadian Dark Ales, I think that was the name for them as well. Um, so that's awesome. Really looking forward to kind of digging into that. Um, that's really, really super cool. I haven't had one of those beers in a while. So it's nice to kind of change things up. I realize that I've been doing a tremendous amount of New England style IPAs, you know. Frankly, I'm, I'm trying to move away from them. It's a little bit tough, obviously. They're kind of dominating the craft beer world right now. Um, and I happen to really dig the style. So I do apologize in advance. All right. Another Hot Butcher for the World in collaboration with Hero Coffee Bar. Sweet. This is called the World's Colombian Coffee Exposition. Cool can, man. So this is a UK Phoenix and HBC 472 hop. So I guess some experimental hops. This and another one of those beers. Imperial Stout brewed with coffee coming in at 10% ABV. Sweet, man. Dig it. I was just talking about doing kind of different styles, so this would be perfect uh, to do a review on. Coffee, dark fruits, chocolate. Awesome, man. It's a great freaking selection of freaking Hot Butcher and Mars, man. Like, going to be running the gambit through their beers once I kind of get through this box. All right. Got a couple of more here. Andrew, you freaking outdid yourself, dude. Like, this is ridiculous. But thank you. All right. Wow, that's a really badass freaking can. Look at that can on it. That's fucking fire. That is really cool. All right. So, this is... Who's the brewery? Forbidden Root, Chicago, Illinois. Have not heard of them. Um, someone from Chicago, from the Chicagoland area, shoot me a note in the comment section. Or Andrew, I'm sure we'll talk about it. <laughs> yeah, this is really super cool. So this is, I'm trying to find out what this beer is. This can art's kind of funky. Like, it's really cool. They got a lot of, like, you know, neat kind of artwork going on. Uh... It's a double IPA. Coming in at 8.2% ABV. Yeah, not a tremendous amount on the can here. But yeah, that's freaking awesome. Never heard of this brewery. Certainly haven't had a beer from them. So that's going to be super exciting diving into them. Thank you. All right, next beer. So we got. All right, yeah, another Hot Butcher. Looks like it's a collab with Miskatonic Brewing Company. Is that a collab, or are, are they like a contract brewer? Maybe that's where they're brewing from. I'm not. I'm not totally sure. I'm gonna have to find out a little bit more information on that. But this beer is called the beer that should not be. Another pretty cool ass can art. Um, this is a Medusa Mosaic and Hallertau Blanc double IPA coming in at 7.5 percent ABV. Tasting notes: funky tropical, herbal citrus, pleasant dank. Yeah. So I actually had a beer, and I can't remember which one it was. It was recently with Hallertau Blanc, um, and I got kind of like a white wine note. I don't have a tremendous amount of um, of uh, experience with that particular hop, but um, I'm expecting to kind of get that. I thought that was super interesting when I had that. Um, what I'm getting kind of these hop butcher beers is, is that they are kind of using a really kind of vast array of different hop profiles, which I think is cool. You know, obviously, especially within, you know, the New England style IPA game, you get a tremendous amount of obviously citra, you know, 
Citra Galaxy Mosaic, right? You'll throw a little Simcoe in there, things of that nature, even maybe, you know, maybe a little bit of Nelson or, you know, something to that degree. Uh, but they're using kind of some experimental hop styles, which is kind of neat. So that's cool, man. Give it another sip here. Mm. Yeah. As I said, that beer is kind of aggressive. I think that might be it for the box. Yeah. That is it for the box, which is more than enough. Andrew, you went above and beyond, sir. This was freaking crazy. All right, guys, let's wrap this freaking video up. We're almost, I think we're over 20 minutes. So if you hung around, watch this. Um, I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, glad you found the channel. Glad you stuck around and actually watch this video. So let's go ahead and give this beer a rating. Again, this is Otter Creek Head Charge Double IPA. All right, so... If I'm going to kind of rate this against, you know, shelf New England style IPAs, um, and again, I'm kind of using that, you know, Sam Adams New England IPA as kind of the measuring stick. I gave that four caps. Uh, I thought that the New Belgium version was quite good as well for what it was. Um, I just liked it a smidgen less, so I gave it a 3.75. If I'm going to be perfectly honest with you... Um, I'm going to have to give this beer 3.5 caps. It's an average beer. Um, you know, to me, for the New England style, again, um, it's really kind of lended itself less towards perceived bitterness, a little bit less kind of aggressive, doesn't really show its alcohol legs well. Um, I think that's kind of a proponent for the style. Um, this is a bit more aggressive, right? So this kind of harkens back to New England style IPAs or New England style beers pre-Treehouse and Trillium, right? So when Alchemist was kind of dominating the game in you know, 2012 to, I don't know, 2014, 2015, maybe. Um, so, yeah, um, decent for what it is. 3.5 caps from the Craft of Ortiz. Does, if you see it, go give it a shot. Give it a kind of taste. I'm interested to see if people kind of think it's it's very kind of alchemisty in nature, which, you know, lends itself to be slightly more kind of aggressive and um, kind of just a little bit more boozy than... Um, I think what the style has become. All right, so 3.5 um, caps from the Craft of War Tastes for the Otter Creek Head Charge. Andrew, thanks again for the uh, amazing, amazing box. Yours will be back on the way soon. So um, hope you join me again for another episode uh, where I drink, review, rate, and repeat, and then maybe again open up another beer mailbox. All right, till next time, guys. Cheers.